I'm Batman. Hello, it's James from X Robots. This is part three of the 3D printed Batsuit cosplay project. This project is supported by Ninja Tech, who make Ninja Flex, Cheetah, and Armadillo filaments, which I'm using to make this entire project. Last time I got most of this strapped up, so we've got our cape mounted, although I need a bigger piece of fabric. I still actually need stitching onto those shoulder things. Also printed directly on fabric with Ninja Flex Cheetah, and that's allowed me to make some under panels for the suit, which I don't have on, I've got a t-shirt on. We're going to be doing more of these as we go along to fit underneath all of these armour parts. So that's where those fabric prints fit, and I'm hoping to cover all the blank sections of the suit with something very similar, obviously tailored panels to fit. This time though, it's time to mount the arms properly, which are currently clamped to the t-shirt sleeves with clamps, and also work on the forearm and the gloves. So to keep my biceps up, obviously without any straps they'll just fall down, we need to attach some straps to the shoulder bells. And you may remember when I printed the Ninja Flex strap that holds the shoulder bell on, I left some holes in the end there, and those are to put the straps down the front and back of the arms so we can attach the biceps. However, my bicep pieces don't have any strap anchors at all inside, they're completely smooth. The main problem with having them attached permanently, of course, is you'd have to put the suit on like a coat, which you can't really do anyway. Or you'd have to have buckles that generally someone else would have to do up purely because you can't really reach them very easily and do them up with one hand and still reach around the suit to do the other side. So it's a constant problem with putting arms on cosplays. So for that reason, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to come up with an innovative strapping solution. So there are several new pieces that are going to get attached to those biceps. First of all, I've made this big mechanical elbow looking piece because the biceps are actually quite short. I definitely need something to cover my elbow. So that's going to be printed in Cheetah and that's going to be pretty flexible. The main part is this green part inside, which is a separate insert. Now that's going to be attached onto the actual straps that drop down from the shoulder bell. And it's also got some holes in here for a bit of bungee that ties around another piece. And that sits on the outside. So basically that's going to hook on to the pivot point where the elbow attaches. So the plan will be that you'll have the green part permanently attached to the straps, you'll put the bicep over it and then pull that bungee down and attach it to a bolt that goes through where the elbow hinges and that should mean that the green part stays locked into the bicep and that helps hold the suit up. Here are my new bicep parts, or the elbows at least, which are made out of cheetah, so those are nice and flexible, and I've put four mil bolts in. So all you need to do to put them on is just go and squash that over and kind of press it on, and there's quite a lot of grip on that bolt, so it should just stay there. We've also got the insert, which I've printed in armadillo, so that's nice and rigid, and the layer bonding's pretty good, so I think my strap holes should be okay like that. So basically that will be strapped onto your arm, on the outside of your arm, so you basically put your uh, put that inside your bicep as you slide the bicep up and then you grab that little disc on the bungee there and that's got um, a special slot shape in it and if you can just see it there and that just pops around the bolt and it should just clip on there we go and that should hold the strapping piece inside the bicep so that can be strapped up and that should hold the bicep on you should be able to do that with one hand but let's attach that to the shoulders and see how it looks. So I've strapped this thing to the bicep. I've got some buckles on there for now so I can adjust the length. Eventually I'll probably just get rid of those because they're quite bulky and just put a stitch through the webbing. But one way or the other, you've got this thing and that's on the outside. So you can put this on. You don't have to put your arm through anything. Then you basically get your bicep and hopefully you just bung this in like so. Position it there and then you grab the little thing and pop that on there. And that should hold everything on and optionally shove that on and that should hold the bicep in place. So I've got those mounted, they seem to be pretty solid. Obviously there's a bit of stretch in that bungee but that's kind of okay because they'll position as you move around. Obviously I haven't tried putting it on myself yet but we'll do that later in the episode. But before that we're going to look at the forearms. So the plan for the forearm is to make a two-part forearm out of rigid and flexible material. So we've got this piece here which looks a bit like a shin pad. That's going to be printed in armadillo and then we've got a cheetah piece that fits on top and this is my template and that's going to sit on the top and the straps go through the holes and then the holes in this cheetah part will strap together with some velcro or something like that on the back of the arm. So using that template 
I've made this piece that's got some ridges and things on. Now the left and right arms are going to be slightly different because I want to have a control panel for some electronics in one of them. But this is going to be the first part I print and we'll see how well that fits together. Okay, so here's first go. So this piece has come out really well. That's really tough. The layer bonding's really good. So I think that's going to be strong enough, even though the build lines run this way. And of course, this piece goes on top. So that would poke through there. And that would go through there. It's quite tough stuff. That's Cheetah on the Moore Struder again. So that would sit there and that would go on my arm and obviously then on the bottom we'll have some velcro straps that put those together there it is so that fits my arm pretty well i've got a couple of velcro straps on the back and that seems to uh, fit okay it's a bit underwhelming though and obviously what i really want as well is somewhere to put those uh, spikes that batman has on his forearm which actually face out that way rather than being on the back so um, i think i need to make one that's a bit bolder really perhaps a bit wider and somehow we need to attach those spikes but it's pretty tough so even though it's 3D printed, that's really strong. So you could actually use it for something practical maybe. But anyway, feels like a proper piece of armor. So moving on from that, I've done a couple of new designs, um, which are these ones. And so basically we've got left and right versions and they've got slightly longer straps on one side and that's to allow another thing to loop through, which is the Batman spikes. And those are gonna be printed in flexible material so they're not too dangerous. So again, they're gonna be cheetah on the Moore Struder and hopefully they're uh, flexible enough to go through those straps basically around the edge of the rigid piece. You'll notice that these are different as well. My right hand is gonna have these um, slightly more pronounced parts on them and the left hand's actually going to be very similar but with a hole in and eventually that's going to be a control panel on my left hand with some electronics in that I can operate with my right hand. So I'll print those out, try and get these spikes done and see how well that fits and how it looks. Where are they? Right, here they are. So I've got those spikes attached there. Obviously the strap goes through them and out the other side and round to the bottom. And also on the spike, I don't know if you can just see that, I left a bend piece. So there's a kind of groove all down the middle and that just sits on the edge of the rigid piece. So that seems to work pretty well. And there's my hole there. Well, eventually I'll put electronics in there with a control panel. And that's my left hand so I can operate it with my right hand. So uh, I think those look pretty good. They're a bit bulky than the first version. I'm pretty happy with those spikes, which are of course slightly flexible for safety. So now we just need to look at the handbacks. Here it is, so this piece has been printed in Cheetah with a Moore Struder again. It's got a place there for the Velcro strap to go through the back. And basically I bought these gloves which have a Velcro patch on the back for Stormtroopers and you can get these on eBay. So the plan is of course that the Velcro here on the edges just sticks on that Velcro. So it's really easy to place my hands. Just do the strap up there. And that's my hand there and it's gripped on pretty well because it's stuck on the Velcro and it's tied around my hand. So pretty happy with the look of that altogether. Obviously I need a black sleeve here, but uh, that's about it. I'm not sure what to do about the fingers. I might make extra pieces, but for now I appreciate being able to grip quite well to get the suit on. So we'll come back to that. Uh, but pretty much I'm quite happy with that. It's quite good all these pieces are modular, obviously on straps, so if I want to reprint the spikes or the handbacks, I can, and I don't have to reprint the whole gauntlet. So the last thing for this video is to make a bigger cape, because the fabric was a bit short, which means these weird corners happened here about halfway up. So the plan for the cape is that we've got a square of fabric, which is this outside line, and we're going to cut a semicircle in it, and these are the two anchor points of the neck, and basically this piece here has to be the same length as this piece here, even though they're not shown like that on the diagram. And that means that this corner will always drag on the ground and the rest of this will drag on the ground. So when it's draped, it should all be the same length with a nice sort of straight line along the bottom of the ground there. At the moment, this is a bit too short, the one I've got. So my corners are there 
which means these corners hang somewhere halfway up and that looks a bit silly. I've just got my cape by the collar there, so I've bunched it all up, and now hopefully we can see, if you can see the bottom, that all of the bottom edges touch the ground at once. So basically the corners are now here, and those are long enough to touch the ground with that stretch there. So that drapes really well. The original cape, of course, wasn't wide enough, so the corners ended up here just by my thighs, so that's no good. So that's the new cape. It's pretty much draped to the same length all the way around. I should point out that this shoulder of the mannequin is slightly higher, so this side is very slightly higher but pretty much having measured it, that's about right. So I've bolted through the cape with these three bolts, which go through the Ninja Tech stuff and they go through the strapping system, but I also left these flaps here with screw holes to actually stitch to the cape. So the cape should come out sort of more onto the shoulders here. So I just need to stitch that on. And for that, I'm using shark fishing line and the needle and it only just fits through the needle. So I'm gonna have a job doing that, but um, that should make it much more secure and also strain relieve it so it doesn't tear through the bolt holes. Where's Bane? Where is he? So there we go, that's the suit up so far. I've got a couple of clips here which are holding the 3D printed fabric on my undersuit because there's nothing holding it on. I've also got these substitute back pants. So you can see where my waist belt is, so that's just the right position for the back belt and a big buckle to go on there. And apart from that, everything fits. I got my biceps on okay. Um, not sure what's happening with this cape. One's gone over the shoulder and one's gone slightly off the shoulder. I think I like the slightly off the shoulder look. So I might put some clamps on my shoulder bells and actually hold the edge of the cape there. So it just sits slightly, slightly back about like that, which I think looks pretty good. And there we go, so everything's fixed on. There's a bit of a square shape on my back, you can see now between the stitched sections. But if you remember last time, I left some holes in the strapping system, the big panel on the back, so I can put some curved armor on, so it'll actually look like there's some back armor and that'll shape the cape. Uh, still in that direction rather than making me look like I'm a cardboard box inside. So uh, apart from that, pretty happy with it though. It's pretty flexible. I can do all sorts of Batman things. I've got quite good mobility in the arms there, so uh, much better than an Iron Man suit. Right, that's the end of part three. Thanks again to Ninja Tech for their support with the 3D printing filament. Next time I'm going to be working on the Bat Belt, which is going to have space for lots of gadgets. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. All right, that's all for now.